Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's uh, Fat Shark stream. Today, we'll be doing a bit of a surprise stream, uh, as titled, and we'll be showing off some exciting new stuff that we're going to be adding to the game. Uh, my name is Tom Batsford, I'm a gameplay programmer, and with me today is Daniel Platt, lead level designer. Hello. And he is going to be outlining some of the new exciting things that we're going to be adding to the game. So, uh, let's start off, I guess, with a quick introduction. Yeah. Uh, do you want to say something about yourself, what you do? Yeah, I'm a, I'm lead level designer on uh, Vermintide. I've been here at Fat Shark since 2013, I think. Mm. Yeah, uh, I really enjoyed my time here, and uh, I've really enjoyed working on Vermintide. Uh, and I really love seeing you guys play the levels in different ways. And even though you find lots of exploits <laughs> yeah. all the time, you but sure it's, love it. yeah, yeah. We, it's it's kind of it's fun to see what you guys come up with. So it's been really rewarding to look at the game after release and coming up with more stuff, which we'll be talking about now. Mm -hmm. All right. So without further ado, let's crack on with uh, the surprise stream. Blondie's laughing at something. Uh, <clears throat> people are uh, throwing out their. Uh, uh, the theories as to why Liam isn't here. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you I'm may like... notice. You may notice that Liam isn't with us this week. He's My no. He's no longer with us. No. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite one is by it's being XDo, which is uh, Liam is at home growing a beard. Yes, yeah. exactly. Some slight envy there, uh, but uh, I'm sure he'll be with us next week. But he's not with us this week, so it's just the two of us now. He's, he's abandoned you. Exactly. We're all you have. <laughs> Okay, so shall we crack on with some community spotlight stuff and take a look at what you guys have been up to? All right. Oh. Oh. This is where we should have the active Okay. Right. Awesome. Ooh, so cool. first part is this. Do we know who it's by? It is by uh, Brain. Brain Eater Deviant Art, and uh, mm. a very cool <laughs> image here of the gutter runner. Yeah, really cool. Uh, post kill, I guess. Considering the Me between kills, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, between. Yeah, maybe. There's no like post kills for gut runners. No. No, no, they always kill. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I like uh, the I like the emblem on his uh, on his belt as well, which is cool. Oh yeah, that's nice. That's yeah, nice. Yeah, really cool. I like that he has a dagger as well. Yeah. Warpstone dagger. And here we have a picture of Carillion. This is Carillion by Inky Blackfire. Inky Blackfire. I very cool. Very, very I, cool. I recognize the Magnus Tower in the background. Oh, oh, not I the thought it was the inn. No, sorry, it's the beginning of Magnus Tower. Yeah, in yeah the, it is. In the in the security Yeah, I, I see, whatever I see we that call now. Yeah. In the yeah, I really like that. That's cool. Very nice. Oh, oh that's this cool. Is, this is by uh, Ustninyan on the Fat Shark forums. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Good stuff, Ustninyan. Also known as the Cheese Ninja. The Cheese Ninja. <laughs> oh, I love the banner and everything. That's really cool. Yeah, that's nice. Which, where is this? Is this in one of our levels? No, I think I haven't seen that tower before. No, the look, tower's cool, though. Not, we should make that tower. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. should be a, a, a building for us to it's use. It's like the, gran the granary tower before it sort of caught fire. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> yeah. Oh, deep theories. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Cool. Yeah. No, really, really, really nice. Yeah. Up next. Moving on. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah. shit. Oh, I, I, I that really <laughs> confused me. You instantly just turned into Liam O'Neill there. That was kind of. <laughs> All right. So I guess strange. what's here is uh, Rats Chat's white, white run on black powder. Yeah. So yeah. last week during the stream, we decided that it might be a fun idea to try and challenge Rats Chat's into completing black powder on Cataclysm whilst only using white items. And. There you have it. They managed it within the last week. So uh, there's no stopping you no, guys. Yeah. No, I say. <laughs> well, I think we need to add some further challenges to the game. Yeah, it's like might. it's it's so kind of frustrating as a developer. You come up with this like, <laughs> yeah. no, we, there's no way there's anybody's no way. gonna complete this. This Never. is impossible. And like, and then somebody goes and does it. Yeah. 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 So yeah, check that out. It's a, it's great. <laughs> it's it's fantastic. Like a fantastic video. If you're if you want to learn some stuff about the game. Um, there's like some great tactics that you can employ, yeah. uh, and they really show off uh, that sticking together is without a doubt the only way to kind of complete this. Yeah. As soon as they, as soon as you split up when you're trying to complete a run with only white weapons, it's, it's, it's never going to happen. Uh, so it's fan great, great, great achievement, and uh, hopefully we'll have another uh, yeah. challenge for them at some point. But we need to make that challenge. Bonus maybe. points for not using exploits. Or yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember watching some. Uh, some solo runs, white weapons, white rat. 
Uh, that was interesting, but there was definitely some exploits being used. Yeah, <laughs> we're working on those. Yeah, yeah. Uh, nice. So some great community stuff. Uh, keep coming with the community stuff. Keep sending it in. We'll gladly show off things on uh, each weekly stream. Uh, and yeah, next week we'll be having a stream. We do the streams every week, so uh, come and watch and you know check out the new stuff. So I guess the meat of this stream. <laughs> The, the main the main reason why I imagine a lot of people are here, other than the giveaway, of course, yeah. which we'll be doing at the end. That's the only is, reason uh, people are here is the yeah. giveaway. Okay, yeah. all right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there's, know there's, there's giveaways. Should we let people know that we have a special giveaway today? Uh, maybe we should. Maybe we should. We'll, we'll explain a little bit about the upcoming DLC, and then maybe we can uh, say yeah. after that how, what, what the giveaway is going to entail. But yeah, we'll do the entree before. Yeah, that, exactly. Before exactly. The, get yeah. people, you know, get people a bit hyped. Okay, so, yes, uh, some of you may have noticed that we have a new web page up uh, that has a countdown, uh, and that countdown is on eight days now, uh, and you've seen this portal, and we have also released some press releases and things outlining what this DLC will be, uh, and it is Castle Drakenfels, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so what the Castle Drakenfels DLC will be is three brand new maps. Yeah. Uh, and if you'd like to go through them, outline a little bit of what we're adding to the game and all that kind of stuff, then go ahead. Yeah, I can maybe start with, like, because this is the first uh, new adventure level DLC we're yeah. releasing, which yeah. is fun, because uh, I think a lot of people have been clamoring for that, and I've been wanting to build more of that, so uh, mm. it's been fun. And uh, kind of, we kind of just wanted to... We were talking about okay, we should probably head outside uh, outside uh, Uber Strike for, for yeah, the first time. So we were kind of talking about what what options do we have, and we kind of started looking at environments around things that are kind of feasible destinations close by, as well, close yeah. by yeah, and which would be interesting and it's put a new perspective on the game. Yeah. So I remember we were talking about a few different areas, but then uh, we kind of looking at these pouring through all these old Warhammer Fantasy role play books and yeah. uh, lots of lore stuff. We came upon uh, Castle Drakenfels. Which is this kind of um, almost living castle that's belonged to uh, an, an, an enchanter, uh, and mm. uh, it's it's been abandoned and gone for a while. But and it's supposedly uh, the the enchanter that lived there is dead. But it's he. But yeah, yeah it's it's like up in the air, really. Like yeah, it's, he's he's apparently very hard to kill. He's been yeah. killed a few times in the lore. So and far. the castle as well, right, is also... The castle has to, apparently to been be demolished, but destroyed. yeah, and it kind of comes back, and yeah. uh, it's kind of a semi-living place, which is cool. And that's Exciting. The, yeah, and Exciting that's for level design as well, I imagine. Yeah, it's really fun to have so much fun lore to go from. Yeah. And uh, the, that, the main focus of the first level is, is the castle itself. So when you're moving through kind of these hallways and these... Old banquet feasts and uh, this is from the first level, yeah I exactly yeah this screenshot and uh, catacombs and uh, and this kind of epic hallways and this we have a really cool new soundtrack by Jesper Kid yes. as well with or, yeah. with uh, awesome organs going yeah. on and like very flutes. atmospheric and like like castle feeling like yeah. it, it's music that would fill halls like yeah. organs and Definitely. just yeah, yeah, it, the, the reverb on everything fantastic. is yeah. huge and yeah it's great great soundtrack it's a, it sets a, such a nice vibe when you build a level and then you kind of just put a soundtrack on it yeah. it's like okay it works nice. it's done the yeah. feeling's there yeah um so that's the first level which kind of uh all these kind of tie together all these missions and the first one is to grab a a, a cursed chalice uh from uh Oh. From, uh, a cursed chalice from uh, from Castle Drakenfels and take it back with you. Uh, and the reason you're grabbing this is because you've heard that the Skaven are about to get it. So you're hurrying to beat them to it, kind of, before they figure out how to get a hold of it. Um, so that's and uh, the second the second level is uh, the dungeons, which is kind of these dark dungeons beneath Castle Drakenfels. Dark being the operative word here. I yeah, think. <laughs> I think to begin with, you kind of work your way downwards, and it's kind of this uh, eerie, scary place. And um, bas uh, the first thing that level adds is kind of traps, which is things you can set off. If you yeah. walk on these plates, they kind of the spikes come out, and you take damage. So you kind of have to walk 
watch where you're walking and not only where where this game are, which yeah. kind of sets in a fight it can get quite complicated if like you're trying to do- dodge a pack master but the trap is behind you and it gets kind of fun and complicated <laughs> yeah. so the like, le- do i risk taking the damage from the trap or do i risk getting grabbed by the pack masters yeah. or like will if i go over this trap in this instance will it even go off is it even active like that's one of the exciting things when yeah. i play it that all of the traps aren't necessarily active at the same time so yeah, with well, kind of had, has this element of randomization to it, where yeah. we have a lot of spots where they can be, but it's about a third chance that there will be a trap. So you'll be wanting to, and there's a few telltale signs when you look closely at the traps, where you can see if their traps are not. So you'll be hopefully sc- people will yeah. learn that the more they play the levels through, they'll be yeah. able to find out which traps are active and which ones aren't. But it's nice how you can't memorize what route exactly. to take, which is exactly. kind of fun, and you'll be like on edge for the. Uh, for the mission, and then later on during that mission, you'll have a you'll have a torch that you pick up. You'll go down deeper, deeper down into this dungeon, and it'll be uh, very, very dark, which is too dark for anybody to see, even the even the dwarf and the elf. Yeah, uh, it's kind of this magical darkness in this castle, and uh, it's not b- affected by uh, the bright wizard flames either, I believe. No, is it's too that? too dark, and yeah. Uh, yeah, you have this magical torch you carry, which uh, kind of lights up the area around you. But it's it's very uh, co-op centric this this mechanic yeah. where you have this torch and you kind of have to stick together and keep an eye on each other, uh, and it's quite fun I think we're playing with three friends and like trying to communicate. Well, no, let's go over here. Let's go yeah. over here and uh, throw the torch down on the floor so you can fight the skaven that are coming towards yeah. you. Pick it up so you can continue through the level. All that kind of stuff. Yeah, it kind of it's like, kind of works like a sack where you can push people away with the torch, but you can't fight with it. So you kind exactly. of have to be either get your friends to cover you or. Uh, or you drop it on the ground, and you kind of, and it's this kind of navigational hazard stuff, and the traps kind of come on top of that later on, which is really cool. I think. Yeah. So, it's a so you f- have the darkness to deal with, the skaven to deal with, and the traps to deal with all yeah. at the same time. So yeah, on Cataclysm, I can imagine this level's going to be pretty pretty good one to try. And yeah, I, it's so it's rats chats. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> white run. Uh, <laughs> we'll yeah. see. We'll see. Yeah, that'll be. That'll yeah, be there you see a screenshot right now of the torch in the ah, back exactly. there and. Uh, Lots of bones there for some reason. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's a dungeon, right? I yeah, it's a dungeon. I can only imagine. Yeah, lots of torture devices and stuff uh. like that going on as well. So it's going to be a, a freaky ride, I think. Mm-hmm. It's fun. Then um, the third level, you'll have noticed on our website with the countdown, there's this, like, ominous sort of green portly type thing. And that is where the third level ties in, right? That's where the Skaven have been using some portals to for mischievous activities or... Yeah, it's uh, Summer, Summoner's it. Peak, uh, and they've kind of, what do you call it, uh, jerry-rigged or kind of hijacked these old uh, yeah. old Nurgle ritual sites and kind of turned them into uh, the portals for them. So they've kind of corrupted, the already corrupted, <laughs> <laughs> kind of, it's kind of fun. Uh, and they, they use these portals to summon in lots of troops, um, and you're basically there to sabotage those portals. And uh, as you attack the portals... What do you think happened? They're, they of course start summoning and uh, scaven through this, the portals, and it's kind of your job to, to you. yeah, trying to. And uh, they have this kind of mission where they try to you uh, overheat them with a with a device, and they try to uh, cool off that device. So they come there and try to pour water on the yeah. device, and you kind of have to stop them. And the longer I mean, they, the longer the portals are coming, the more scaven are coming exactly. through, it, right? So they, they want to keep the portals active as, as long as possible. Yeah. and there'll be yeah, lots of it's it's a, that's a really cool vibe. I think it's up on the mountains on a cliffside, with yeah. the, the view beneath and all these like really scary looking portals. It's that's like cool tone. I think. Yeah, so we're, it's, a, it's a great yeah. level, fantastic level. I can't wait to play it as well. It's it's pretty pretty fun. Especially when you see like a rat ogre coming leaping out of one of the portals. It's yeah. like, ah, did not see that coming at all. <laughs> you don't get that build up that you normally get with a rat ogre, it's just sort of there. Yeah, exactly. Which is really nice. And I think w- something else that is cool with it is this kind of like you have to do this kind of leaps of faith almost. You have this, since it's built up in the cliffs on these kind of snaky mountain paths, you kind of have to jump onto a bit of. Uh, a, uh, a bit of a bit of a cliff or something or over a gap yeah. or stuff like that which is cool and exciting to I, I know that there was whilst I was playing through it uh, initially there was a couple of places where I didn't know where I had to continue and then there'd be like a jump and I'd be do I can I make that is that where I okay I'll, I'll try I'll yeah. try and then you jump and it's like okay oh yeah. right, you, okay hopefully hopefully this is the correct way but uh, I'm hoping that everyone yeah I'm hoping everyone really really enjoys these levels it's a bit of a yeah it's such a kind of mountaineering vibe that yeah aspect. yeah so this screenshot is kind of exciting. Uh, you may notice 
a I've new noticed. a new weapon. What is it? Uh, the, are the Skaven using a new weapon? Yeah, exactly. Is you that, see is that, that Skaven <laughs> there? Yeah. No, uh, yeah. So you may have noticed that there's a new weapon there, and with this DLC, we will be adding a couple of new weapons. I believe two new uh. weapons to the game. One of them being this one. I'm not sure if we can say what the other one is. So, I don't know. But announce them. Go. Uh, go for it. Maybe Liam's not here. No, that's true. Li- yeah, that's true. Okay, <laughs> so let's just go for it. So this one uh, will be for the Witch Hunter, and this is a volley crossbow. Really cool, rapid fire crossbow. Real like really long reload time. Yeah. But it's like. The equivalent of a Warhammer LMG, I guess, <laughs> slamming a load of ammo in and then just like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the uh, alternate, like, yeah, the alternate fire is really cool. It's really nice. Yeah. Like shoots three arrows, split shot kind of thing. So you've got three Skaven running towards you. You can just like take them all out at the same time. It's kind time. of fun. I like the design of it. It's such a like a big box. Yeah, like, exactly. It's not what I associate. Looks awesome as well. It like it's like, that doesn't look like a crossbow. But no. then like thinking about it. It isn't really a, like the use of it is completely different from the yeah, regular crossbow. Yeah, exactly. It's, a, it's not a sniper uh, yeah. crossbow. It's for like taking out as much as yeah. possible. Uh, so it's cool. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic new weapon to try out. Uh, that will be for the Witch Hunter and will be available in uh, blue, orange, and red qualities. So you can find it in <laughs> those three rarities. Yeah. Uh, and then the other weapon, which there aren't any screenshots of, is a new melee weapon for the elf, and it's a glaive. Uh, and I don't know the mechanics personally, but it's a two-handed weapon. Yeah. So, I mean, the elf has only ever had one-handed weapons so far, so... Well, I mean, it kind of works fairly similar to the two-handed axes we have now. But okay. it kind of... Um, I think it often tends to uppercut, kind of like bring enemies up. Oh, nice. Like slice okay. them upwards. I can imagine of, that gives some yeah. cool, uh, like killing death animations. Yeah, so so, and it's like it's it's kind of nice because it get, adds some utility to the to the wood elf as well. Just yeah, kind of like yeah, rapid yeah, yeah. fire. It, it gives now you can go yeah. like slow, more AOE kind of yeah. smiter, as we call it in the office at least. Smiter, yeah. Yeah, it's like single target damage yeah. kind of weapon. It's cool well. to add some variety and like more options to the to the classes. I think yeah to the heroes. Yeah. Definitely. So you've got that to look forward to as well when we release this DLC. So this will be dropping uh, in eight days, was it? Six days? Eight days. Eight days. Eight days, 26th of May. So very soon, actually. So, yes. And I guess that leads on nicely to say what we're doing in this giveaway. And that is that we will be adding one Jack and Fels DLC to the giveaway this week as well. So mm-hmm. there'll be the usual 10 hats, and then one lucky person will get a Jack and Fels DLC for free. And they're all lucky. Oh, of course. One, one slightly luckier. One, one like, what's that? Like ten rolls of six, and then a roll of seven, perhaps on the on the loot on the loot table. <laughs> uh, one for the Dragonfell's DLC, yeah. and then some hats for the others. Somebody would roll an eight. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Better than most. Okay, so yes, if you have any questions uh, for Daniel about Dragonfell's, or for me, or. Or lev- I guess levels in yeah, general. Level, or, yeah, or, it's not necessarily yeah. just Drakenfell stuff. If you have yeah. any questions at all, feel free to throw some in the chat. And uh, we'll do the usual of looking through some... We've gathered some questions that you guys have been asking from uh, Reddit and from the forums. So we can do a quick look through them and hopefully give you some more information about different things. Yeah. So, go ahead, Daniel. First question is from I can. I, maybe we, I think maybe we start with the noodles one because it's like a kind of a good first question. Aha, yeah, uh, yeah, go for it, sure. Yeah. The noodles. Uh, so noodles asked a question where from Reddit, asked, uh, what is the first step when designing a new level? Uh, do you choose a location first to fit the level, uh, or, no, do you, or do you fit the level to a location? Uh, and which comes first, mechanics, story, or art? Um, so I guess this delves into like our process from concept yeah. to completion uh, for the levels. Yeah. I think uh, it's been kind of varied for for the main game. It's been often like, okay, we want these. Uh, like we had a checklist of places we wanted to nail for for a Warhammer game. Like, okay, we need this and this. We need a sewer. We need a we need a I don't know. Yeah, uh, we need a forest. We need a lot of houses that look like they probably couldn't stand up on their own. Really yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, we needed we needed to check some of those boxes. But then for uh, for th- uh, and then. Right after that, it was like, okay, we started building on the mechanics and like uh, checking out the layout, and then the story kind of popped in. Uh, but for the DLC, I'd say it's probably we fit the we pick the location first. Yeah, that of, was the first yeah, decision. The first decision, like where do we set this, and then we start kind of started working on some layouts and stuff like that. 
And then we kind of chose where in this vicinity we're going to be. Like the, the portal level was like, okay, let's build some cliffs. Where can we fit this around? Yeah. Um, which is cool. So and then that's when, after that, once we've decided on the location and then what we want the levels to look like or include, that's when we come in with like the gameplay stuff, right? And then yeah. decide what events we want in the level, what are the players going to be looking for, what are they going to be doing in the level, and then... Especially what end event is going to be exactly, fun. It's usually exactly. what it's about. Like, yeah. okay, you pull... Coming up with uh, fun end, end events. Yeah. Uh, that's what I like about the portal level, actually. Like, the end event is, f like, really fun, and but then you have the other portals as well. There's, like, other things that you have to do in the level. Yeah. So it's, like, multiple event after event after event. Yeah. And that's, like, a nice change i think to the usual way you're like going for a section maybe you have a mid event and then an end event yeah uh, but this is like just event 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 yeah yeah it's kind, kind of, of taxing on you yeah cool. exactly um so that's usually how we do it but it kind of depends like if sometimes the request comes that we really need a level in this location or we really need a short level and then we have to talk okay we need to yeah. think about short okay what do we do then so it kind of varies but uh it's it's different every time so, but I'd, I'd say for most levels, it's been we choose a location first and then we kind of fit everything in there afterwards. But story usually comes last, I'd say. Like art comes slightly before story. I think uh, like story comes uh, when trying to select the location. Yeah, perhaps. definitely. Yeah, definitely. We, we consult them then. then they the make sense. Yeah, exactly. There. But then the individual story yeah. for the level and what you're going to be doing on that comes later on. But what felt as a limitation first with Warhammer was that there was so much lore we had to like adjust to and fit fit in and stuff like that. Kind of proved to be a strength because there's so much in there uh, that we can absolutely. we can like we absolutely. can find another place here and there and like we can usually the story because we have so many people that are so well versed in the lore. They can kind of w w make everything fit. I think I know a lot about Warhammer, but like some <laughs> people, to some no, people no, they can just fit no, anything, exactly in that, which the same is great. As me, exactly the same as me. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I guess uh, the next question is by Andridge uh, from Reddit, and it's asked: Can you share with us? Uh, can you share with us the reason for not seeing more randomized level layout elements akin to the branching paths in Enemy, enemy Below? Uh, so ah. yeah, at the end of Enemy Below. You kind of you have to escape up through. I don't know if you most of you have played it. So when I you, assume most people. Yeah, have when you when you blow the pillar up at the end uh, of enemy below, you kind of have to run out through these these tunnels, uh, which are kind of caving in and kind of randomizes which tunnels cave in. Um, so you have kind of have to go right or left, and it's kind of hard to memorize where you're supposed to go. Um, I think we have something really like smallly similar to that on uh, supply and demand as well, where you have the two paths yeah. where one of them can open up and the other one can't. Um, so and it's cool to add that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think I think it's one of those things where we really like it and we think it's fun, but it does add uh, quite a bit of uh, cost to development, which is Absolutely. like when you stressed on time, like we were for most of the main game. It's it's been kind of hard f making time for that stuff. So it's been like oh, okay, maybe it's just easier if we just finish finish this and then we can focus on the end event or fixing this bug or. Stuff like that. So Absolutely. it's been something that we enjoy and we, we want it more, but uh, it's been hard to squeeze in. But I think uh, when you play these maps that are coming, you'll see a bit of that as well, yeah. um, especially in the the end events, which is fun. Yeah. yeah. I think it's, it's one thing that I really enjoy in the levels. I think I enjoy the levels the most, uh, the ones that have a bit of randomization because yeah. it mixes it up each time you play it, right? Yeah. But yeah, like you said, I mean, it like, the production cost is obviously increased because you have to make multiple parts of the level, one part of the level multiple times. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, I guess we were probably in the mindset where more levels is maybe cooler than having fewer, but with randomization, I don't know. Yeah, it also adds some, like, uh, if there's a, makes it harder to test as well. Like, if there's a bug in one of the areas, uh, absolutely. it's not as likely to be found. As the, I mean, it's absolutely worth it, but... But some some days you just okay. I, I I need to focus on this. We're too stressed to, to figure yeah, this out. Yeah. So, but I definitely uh, I promise there will be more of that. Yeah, in the future we'll yeah. hopefully and well probably definitely look yeah. into that a bit more. Yeah. Okay. Next question is from uh, Darkest Seer via Reddit. Some parts of the game could use some more optimization. White Rat, as an example, is a small map but runs quite poorly. Can we expect another tweak soon in the future? Uh, my answer to that is absolutely question mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, optimization is something that is continuously ongoing. We always have people that are working on optimization, and I've said before, 
and I'll say it again, uh, we're continuously working on the consoles as well currently. And as part of that, we were, we are adding optimizations to the game, and eventually they will see their way into the PC version as well. Or the, the, the majority of them will at least. Yeah. Uh, so yes, you will see optimization improvements on some of the levels and the game in general. Yeah. Some, something we never no, uh, mentioned about that is that we're also working on the uh, hang, the controller support for the yeah, game. Yeah, exactly. Which will also make it into the yeah. Console. The control the controller support currently for the game is kind of like it's a bit. I don't know. It feels it feels sort of rushed, which yeah. I dislike. Uh, but we've been putting a lot of effort into improving that. I'm not sure if there's many people that play on PC with the control with controller. Uh, I think the majority play with mouse and keyboard, but. Um, yeah. There's no reason we can't support that once we no once exactly. console development like it is furthering and it's getting a lot better yeah and that will yeah. come back to PC. I mean yeah. we've we've done improvements on how like the consumables are used on uh, controller we've been adding some recently I've been adding some uh, like aim assist like mm -hmm. subtle aim assist to try and help whilst playing on the controllers uh, just small things like that will hopefully improve the PC version as well once we. Uh, release the consoles and get all of that console stuff yeah. onto the PC version. And to touch on optimization again, I, I would like in a way kind of like to apologize on some on some levels have been have been not <laughs> not the performance hasn't been quite up to par, but we like it is something we're working on. And I, I realize that it can be frustrating, like you're sitting there playing the game week after week. But we once we do something, it often takes some time. Like if we do an optimization, there's no reason why that wouldn't maybe have another bug on it. So it's often like when you do fix something, you have to kind of double check everything again, yeah, to make sure exactly. you release something that's as good. Um, so it's something that takes time for us. Uh, and I appreciate your patience with that. Yeah. Uh. All right, next question. Macaroni asks a question for you, Daniel. What would Daniel say the most important aspect of level design is? That's a tough, <laughs> uh, tough question. A broad I, question. Yeah, I guess it is to have the most important aspect of level design is, I think, to set out uh, when you're building a level to have a goal with the level. Like, what do I want with this level? Not just a box room or something. I want it to feel like this. I want it to sell, teach the player this feature, or I want it to, I want the enemy, this enemy to be really cool, or like, or mm -hmm. just I want this to further cooperation to the maximum. Like, I don't know, the torch in. Dungeons yeah. was like, okay, that's the, that's the main objective of this mission is to force people to cooperate. Really, like it's going to be one of those four players, or uh, or not, well, basically, yeah, or yeah. or almost like, or at least you need two people to really cooperate. But yeah. like, you have to listen to each other and help each yeah. other out. Yeah. Uh, I would say that's the most important aspect of level design. It's a uh, specifically for this game, I think. Yeah, like the co-op side of it is a, a yeah. big one. But like every level, I think, like. You can start out with having a point with the game, but I think every level should have something that tries to set it apart a little bit. Um, maybe that's, I don't think that's the right answer, but it's one answer to <laughs> the most important aspects of level design. Uh, uh, okay, so let's move on to Kyriel. Asks, yeah. any plans for Last Stand make ba to make barrels reappear? It's kind of cool to use them, but with a pro team, you can reach wave 30 and you only get five barrels. Hmm. So, uh, yeah. Don't know. I didn't. I've never thought about that, but there's really no reason why we shouldn't. No. Uh, maybe on specific ways we can spawn in some new barrels or something. I'm not sure. Yeah. I I ha I haven't um, looked into how we do it, but it's probably not not a bad idea. I'll I'll write that down. Mm. <laughs> Thanks for that question slash suggestion. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. The question, like the suggestion and answers. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> uh, next question from Frappe Warrior. I think I read somewhere online that one of the new maps will have randomly placed traps. If that's true, are there any plans uh, to do more procedurally generated features in the game? So I think we've already touched on that. Yeah. Kind of. I mean, the procedural generation of uh, the traps is something that we've added to one of the levels. Yes. Uh, and and some random and paths some, more exactly. on on further levels. Uh, it is something that's really cool, especially for replayability. So it's, it's something I want to keep pushing for. Absolutely. Me too. So. Me too. Um, do you want to take the next one? Um, for the lid level designer, what's the most uh, diff... Oh, sorry. Uh, John Hazatoth. I think that's how you pronounce mm, it. Yeah. Uh, from Reddit. Uh, for the lid level designer, what is the most difficult part in creating a good level? Also, how do you incorporate the design submitted by the concept artist into a working level? So for the first question, I'd say... Um, 
some of the most difficult parts is probably making sure you often start out with a good vision and an idea, but then as kind of reality sets in and kind of <laughs> time and like, uh, I don't know, fi- like you've played it so many times and it's like small, small tweaks here and there and somebody else comes in and works on it maybe a little bit. And then that thing, that little idea you had, that little spark can kind of sometimes kind of go missing mm. uh, and you forget about it. Like, what was the reason I wanted to do this? In yeah, the, later uh, on yeah. In, the, in the production, you're like, wait, wait a second, why did I... And somebody's, add, I don't know, you've added this thing and this thing and this thing and some producer has put in this and uh, like, yeah. like, it kind of gets complicated and it can be hard to like maintain that focus if it's for a long, if you're building the level during a long time. Uh, and often like during main game, it, the main game, you've we've worked on a level for a long time maintaining it, and that's been a really nice exception for the DLC, where you can we've had this kind of like shorter time on the level and not too much stuff that comes in later that has to be added in. It's mostly like been a pretty smooth process of yeah. from A to B, which is cool. And I we incorporate the design submitted by the concept artist uh, kind of really early. We like I kind of explain Does concept come after the. After, like I remember you when you first proposed the levels for Jack and Fels, I think yeah. it was. Does the concepting come before or after you've decided on what, like loosely, what layout you want no. uh, and what kind of architecture you're going to need and things like that? It kind of they, they, come, they come in at stages, kind of. You you have this kind of you set up on maybe a reference pictures that like you kind of I just want to want it to look something like this and something like this, like I pick a sewer from. Somewhere like okay, then what do you think about this? And I kind of discuss it with the concept artist, yeah. and they are the ones that kind of drive the art of it, like or the look of it. So, which is important to have to make sure that they're Warhammer experts on how it looks, and a really big part of Warhammer is the look. So, I don't want to, I don't want to do something that doesn't look yeah, Warhammer, uh, and I kind of clear everything with them. Like, will this part work? Will this part work? Uh, and then. Once you discuss that, I kind of start layouting, and th- at the same time, they start working on like mood concepts and stuff like that. And sometimes you can actually just take an area from their concept painting and like put it yeah, in. Just put Somet- it in. Or yeah. sometimes you just kind of get the general gist of it. A mood concept is like uh, uh, not necessarily what the level layout will be, but what we want the level to feel like. Yeah, uh, kind of the look, like you know, the look, so, like the, the colors. Like the colors, but, yeah. exactly. It's like a good like color palette, good color reference. Yeah, like and also spiky shapes, maybe, exactly. or uh, round like silhouettes shapes, of yeah. different architectures and things. And then uh, once I've built a bit of a white box, you call it kind of like a um, very basic shapes to build the level. Uh, they kind of often do a paint over, which is when we send them a screenshot and they kind yeah. of paint over it and kind of fill in the details, which is... Uh, which what things are going to look like or like more detailed things and that kind of goes away to environment art which and they start kind of building the parts that we we use so which the final 3d models kind of mm. um and it's a really fun process to go back and forth with the concept artist and they often have it's ridiculous how many times i run out of ideas or like i have no idea uh, i don't know this kind of box i just build a box and this is a room and then they come back and it says something really <laughs> cool like you know yeah. a cathedral with the spiky shapes and i don't know it's, everything can happen it's yeah. really cool it's kind of nice to have somebody who's a professional idea haver. Just like they just, <laughs> yeah. I'm out of ideas. Yeah. Help me out. That's and what design is, right? P- as well, professional idea haver. Kind to of, some but, but we have to do, be really responsible about our ideas. Yeah. Concept can kind of just they have other things to answer to, but they just okay. We, this idea. Oh, yeah, yeah this would be good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this looks cool. Make this happen. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hope that answers your question. Okay, uh, next question is from uh, Zeno Memphe. Yeah, Xenomemphate. Let's go for that. Via Reddit, what is something you're most proud of in the game? Do you want to take this? No, you take, that's oh, a hard question. Okay. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say that it's solely like down to me, but it's something that I'm very proud of with the game, and that is like the feeling of the melee combat. I think we really nailed it, and I think uh, it took a lot of time. There was a lot of iterations on the melee combat, and uh, I know one of our like new designers, or well, Mats, came in, and like threw everything that we had out the window and went okay let's try this out and it ended up working really yeah. quite nicely so yeah i think i think one of my proudest things about the game is that people recognize the game as uh, a game that has done melee combat well yeah definitely it's up there with like the the big ones like chivalry and exactly that's like it. exactly and some 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 extent were better i know yeah. yeah i know i met a couple of people at egx who 
was saying that they took quite a lot of inspiration from Vermintide, oh. whilst it, like developers, whilst yeah. implementing Melee in their games. So that that's like a real nice... Uh, but I love that about game development. It's like uh, kind of everybody's okay with kind of borrowing from each other. Yeah, and like, absolutely. It's expect everybody standing on the shoulders of giants exactly. before them. So it's exactly. kind of really fun. I mean, if someone manages to do something well, like... You, what, why would you not use the same kind of idea? I mean, yeah. you could probably improve on it, of course, because you have longer development time and stuff. Yeah. But, I mean, you may as well take that as a base and just try and improve on that concept. And you, even though you're setting out to do exactly the same thing, it's not going to be the same. No, Somebody else is doing not. it, and it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's really cool like that. I love that. For better or for worse, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we've got some questions from the chat that Blondie has uh, kindly brought and up Leo. for us. And Leo. And Leo. Oh yeah, Hedge. Is he in chat? Is he, uh, is he yeah. patrolling? He's patrolling, I think, yeah. Might have left. Okay. Okay, so spam away. It's fine. <laughs> he's, he's gone now. <laughs> no, we still, <laughs> we still have, we still have Blondie on the, yeah. on the patrol. It's fine. <laughs> you won't stand a chance. Okay, uh, so uh, Domtas asks, real talk, are you at any point going to add <laughs> death, death Wish as a real difficulty? Uh, real talk, I don't know. I mean, if it's something that people really want, maybe it's something we'll explore. But that was really made for it's, April Fool's. I joke. think it's one of those. I mean, thing, it's cool. Yeah, it's one of those things where we like grossly underestimated we the community it. again. Like, <laughs> yeah, oh, we had in cataclysm. Exactly. There's no way anybody's yeah, no going to be that. Yeah. And Death then like, wish. Def- yeah, bring it on, bring yeah, it on. Yeah, like everybody's. Oh, what's wrong with you guys? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Maybe I think it's the conversation is definitely swinging a yeah. little bit in that direction. Yeah. So yeah. we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, there was a lot of. There, it definitely wasn't implemented as a real difficulty when no. we did it it was it was very much like very fake yeah let's yeah. <laughs> let's spawn in a load of rattling gunners and see what happens oh it looks cool let's put it in the trailer yeah. uh, i think the trailer was so well made that it did look fun it looked yeah. it wasn't fun <laughs> to play to worry. be honest that's yeah. one worry yeah absolutely the trailer was too good like oh wow it looks really cool when yeah. there's 10 rat ogres coming towards you it's not that cool when you have not. to fight I, them <laughs> i promise it's not fun plus all of those people with their you know heroic killing blow trays just running around hopefully getting one shots on everything like yeah. shield bash like yes yes insta kill insta kill <laughs> so we'll see we'll see maybe i mean if there's if there's a lot of people that are fancying it then maybe we can spend like one of our hack weeks on trying to trying yeah. to add it to the game or something but there's no plans for it at the minute at least so near near Wero, uh asked me yo daniel <laughs> <laughs> any secrets in dragon Falls? i'd say yes like uh, uh, there's quite a few secrets like it's always fun to see you guys Look for grimoires and stuff, and tomes mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So there's definitely going to be some of that in there, and some of the harder ones so far, I'd say. Are we saying which, not necessarily which levels have grimoires on, but how many of the levels have grimoires on, or are we just going to leave that for people to find out? Two. Okay. All right. So <laughs> two of the new levels will have grimoire slash grimoires on, but it's up to you guys to find them, of course. Grimoire yeah. slash grimoires. Grimoire slash grimoires. Oh, okay. There might be there might be one. I don't know. There might be two. We'll have to see. But good luck on finding them at least. Yeah. It gives it adds a bit more. Uh, yeah, that that feeling that you get when you first find out that grimoires are in the game, and then you go around all the levels looking for them. Yeah, you get that that fresh experience again with some new levels. So. Yeah, I'm really happy about that feature. The yeah. grimoire feature yeah, added so much to the it's game. It's nice. That's yeah. nice. Okay, uh, DJ Law sixty nine asks as the lead level designer. Is there something you really want us to notice about these new levels, such as a unique room or structure? Hmm. Unique room or structure? These are great questions. Yeah, I think uh, the coolest, one of my favorite things from the new uh, new DLC is uh, the, the escaping from the Castle Dragonfest level, which is like yeah. kind of this like dungeons you move through, and it's kind of pretty tricky we use some of these random things to uh, kind of stop you in your tracks these walls come up or these kind of iron barriers come up yeah. to stop you and can have to go back and run around uh which i think and the the whole kind of vibe in the place it's like spider webs and hasn't been used for a long time yeah that's cool. can't help and the area before that which i don't want to go into details of because <laughs> no. it's kind of it's pretty spectacular looking yeah. at least yeah mm. so um and yeah i we, it's been a labor of love, the whole thing. So I, th- I think every level, every room, <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, but pl- plenty of rooms are. There's a lot of small details here and there that you you can yeah. look into. It'll and, be nice yeah. to see what people find and what people yeah. enjoy in the levels as yeah. well. Especially moving around in the dark in uh, yeah, the dungeons. Like that's gonna there's going to be rooms here and there yeah. and stuff yeah. you won't find. But 
it's like it's every, even though I built it, I I can't quite remember which room I've been in. Or no, no. <laughs> I mean, fun. yeah, I, it's the the amount of times that I've walked around and just gone ended up somewhere and gone. Have I been here before ever? Yeah. Have I been here before this play session? Yeah. Have I been here before last place? Like yeah. I, I just don't remember. So it's it's yeah. something that's really positive about the darkness and yeah. the torch. It's yeah. hard to navigate. Yeah. Okay. Next question. Constab. Oh God, you like picking ones with the names that are pretty Constable hard. Constable Norwal. It's, no, it's, 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 it's an English okay, word. It it's is, fine. Yeah. Two English words. Constable. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Constable. Constable. <laughs> Constable. <laughs> Constable Norwal. Nice. Go ahead. Uh, when working on this project, how excited were you to be one of the first to touch on the Warhammer End Times series? Uh, I thought it was really cool to be part of something. Like, yeah. we started on it before that's, we even knew I about it. I think that's End one Times. of the most exciting things for me, yeah. is that we started production on the game, and then uh, Games Workshop came to us and said, yeah, we're kind of doing this End Times thing. Do you want to get in on that? Want to yeah. get in on that? And we were like, yeah, yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> Uh, Which was absolutely, real. Uh, and I remember like we were like sworn to secrecy, like we yeah. have NDAs and stuff on what uh, we're working course. on, but like when it was like, okay, we know about the end times. Yeah, we have NDAs with, like within our company on like, you know, don't say what we're working on, but yeah. then it's like now we've all got no secrets about Games Workshop before it's yeah. even been announced. And yeah, <laughs> and like we were had separate meetings with uh, the creative director and our lead producer. Yeah, uh, which like, okay, do you understand the importance of what you're about to learn today? <laughs> exactly. And then, like, Oh. Uh, it was, it was, it was yeah. fun. It was pressure, but yeah, kind of it was, it was yeah. cool. And yeah, like announcing the fact that we were working on the end times as well was really cool because, uh, yeah, I mean, our announcement came out before the end times had really finished yeah. their story, so a lot of people didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, so that was exciting for us, and also the amount of lore that it's added for us this is incredible. Like us working on the end times means that we have so much stuff that we can go on to in the future, yeah. different locations we can visit. You know, all that kind of exciting things. Yeah. Um, that's cool. Okay, Gromstar asks, uh, how, how, how do you test maps for exploits? Are exploits the biggest problem when creating a map? I'd say we test the maps for exploits. We have a really good uh, QA department, which does a lot yeah. of that, which Liam used to be a part of. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, they... Uh, they try to exploit right yeah like, <laughs> that's their job pretty much yeah. like the first it's like making sure the game runs well and doesn't bug out and then it's just like actively okay, trying break, to break break yeah. this level please break the, yeah and um i'd say it's a pretty big problem uh i'd but i think we've kind of in a way in the way that our kind of movement and stuff works which is some of the most of the bugs come from like movement and you can jump out of the level yeah, or you jump can, up yeah on this. jump to this location or but we've kind of chosen with the way the movement works that we allow people to jump on stuff and kind of because it adds a lot to the game we think like Absolutely. we can find secrets and you can do trick jumps and like we were thinking of doing like a more conservative thing where you are oh, you're on the ground you can't really jump up on small things it's kind of we call it the size of the the mover which is the the the, the thing the player uses to move around with yeah. pretty much it's so, like yeah. it's, it's what we use for collision right it's what yeah. we use to check against like if you're hitting a wall or yeah. if you can go over a certain obstacle yeah and you can be really like mean or you can be really like um safe with that where they can't yeah. stand on anything just fall down but it's, we kind of enjoy people being able to jump up on this and like finding this little yeah n this little thing and something we regardless use regardless of it adding more problems for us <laughs> yeah i think it's been like it's a balance yeah. but i think it's one of the bigger bigger problems but i feel exploits can be really bad when they like to kind of force you to play a certain way where you have to kind of ruin or like you have to play a boring way yeah but i think like if if you find a small advantage where you like get up on this ledge and you can like get a few stabs in and the the like or like you're a little bit safer up there it's like i i think that's can be fun in yeah, a way. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's a part of like ch challenging the game up on higher difficulties. Yeah. And I mean, exploits are something that we're always looking to fix as well. Yeah. I mean, I know that there was a lot that were found uh, when we released the game on like Magnus Tower, for example. Yeah. And we were pretty eager to get them fixed because, yeah. like, I mean, it ultimately detracts from the experience. If you're playing Magnus Tower and you have a team that don't know about an exploit, yeah. and you're like, come on, let's let's do the exploit, let's do the exploit. People might not necessarily want to. Uh, it means yeah. that it makes the level too easy, and it's just it's it's just not a fun experience for everyone. Yeah. So it, it it's, it's nice to try and stay on top of exploits. Yeah, it can be boring when you have to do them. Like when exactly. it, when they give you such an advantage that like there's no point yeah. in not doing it. And if you don't know about yeah. an exploit, then you kick from the group or something. That's yeah, like, exactly. that's like worst case for us. So. Yeah, so it's it's always a balance there, and we pre really appreciate you guys reporting them and Absolutely. like sending that stuff in. Uh, I don't know how much how much time do we have on the QA. 
Go ahead. Okay. Are you yeah, guys? We, got, yeah. we have a couple of questions more, so let's do those. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. So we've got like five more questions. What about, the, yeah, we have a question that uh, from JLB Yoon. Uh, any new voiceovers for these new missions? Ah, definitely. Yeah, there's lots definitely. of new dialogue written, and it's like the story guy, Magnus, has been really like involved, and we Matt Ward has written some new dialogue for this as well. Yeah. Uh, so it's really fun to see uh, all the new story, and we brought all the actors back in to record more stuff. Yeah. So it's been fun. And I think we've added some voiceovers to the regular game as yeah, well. Yeah. Not we said last week that every time we add a DLC, we're going to be adding more voice lines. And that is going to be for like the new DLC and the regular game. So, yeah. uh, you know, every opportunity that we get to be able to get the voice actors in to do some couple of lines, I'm sure the, the sound guys are pretty eager and, and our story guy pretty eager to. Yeah get them to record some new lines that we and can I, I love I love our voice actors they're yeah. so good and yeah. it's like so Definitely. fun listening to the dialogue and just playing along and then I like, find myself giggling like during a t- test session because of <laughs> some dialogue that somebody said it's fun yeah. uh, this is a good question from uh, Mr. Entil uh, will this DLC work the same in that only the host requires it to play and I believe the answer to that is yes. Yeah, if you join somebody that, that is hosting on it, you'll you'll be able to join. Yeah, join them through your friends list. That is. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Yeah. You can. Okay. Yeah. 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 So it works. Yeah. You, if you're if you have if you know someone that owns the DLC, then they can invite you to the lobby, and then you can yeah. play the game with them. Uh, so yeah, it will work exactly the same as the last stand, uh, or rather, the fall, DLC. Yeah. Yes. So. Yeah, these new maps, you'll be able to play them with your friends if only one person owns them and they are hosting the game. And I, I think it's always a balance for us. Like, how, like okay, we need to make money off of this to to um, to finance. Yeah, we want make more stuff, right? Yeah, so. but, and it's also like we don't want to split the community. So no. we, so we feel no. like this is a good like in-between path Absolutely. for us. Where we, Absolutely. Where we get the benefits of people still being able to play together, yeah. but we also It also adds a, a nice little bit yeah. of that try before you buy kind of thing. Like if yeah. you know someone that owns the DLC, you play through it, you're like, oh, damn, this is awesome. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah maybe I'll pick this up. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's it's great. It's a great way to do it. I think I think we... we Hit the nail on the head with the uh, DLC policy yeah. with that one. Definitely. Definitely. Feels good. Uh, should we go for Sire de? Sire, yeah, dear, dear, dear. Yeah. I don't know. Sire dr. Yeah. My favorite is Engines of War. Is there going to be any more forest levels? Um, yeah, there will be. <laughs> yes. There I will probably. Be. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm allowed to say, but whatever. Liam yeah. isn't here. <laughs> Nobody can stop me. They're on a different floor. It's fine. (laughs) Total anarchy. Anarchy, yeah. Yeah, That's probably going to be some some new forest levels. Um, Yeah. Pixel Matt asks how long. Pixel Matt, we've. Sorry. Uh, How Pixel Matt asks how long does it take to make a map? Uh, And I'm going to answer. I wish I knew. (laughs) <laughs> how long have you been in the business now yeah 10 years yeah. I've worked as a level designer yeah. it's always different every time there's always some issue that comes up and you can like you can guess a little bit oh maybe like one and a half months two months I don't know but then it's like yeah. could be Things wrong change. you add a new feature uh, something has to be redone I don't one, know. one like half of the map just isn't fun and yeah. you're like okay well let's yeah. uh, back to the drawing board for that bit then yeah it's uh, my producer hates me because I can't I, can't, <laughs> I don't know but I think very some some companies really have it down to T, and they're great at that, like planning mm. how long it takes to make a map. But I, I'm not. I'm sure the more we work on levels for time, we'll be able to work yeah, it out. Yeah, every yeah. Like if we get to like, okay, we need a new short level. Okay, well, short levels tend to be this long in production pipeline. But yeah. I mean, on on average, how long would you say it takes a map from uh, conceptualization or idea to production? When when was the f- to release? I guess when when did, was it that we release? is hard because then you have a lot of other considerations. Like you, what are you releasing it with the pack and like uh, this QA yeah, that's time? True. And, yeah, but I mean, yeah. for for this DLC as an example, how long ago was it that we started working on Drakenfels? I'm not sure. I'm supposed to say that, but I don't know. But I, I mean, uh, I don't know. I mean, it was. It's yeah, I, th- I think the first first inklings of it were like of. of I don't know, a half a year ago or something. Yeah, something like but that. Then, like, but, I mean, been... we didn't start. That was just from initial idea. Like, yeah. Uh, but then there's been three maps, and we've had different level designs yeah, I, I, taking over different parts of the maps. I'd so. say I'd say every level is going faster, which is good. So yeah, we're, nice. we're getting better and better at it. So yeah. maybe if you ask me in a while, I'll know exactly how long <laughs> it takes to make a map. Great. Maybe. Uh, okay, so we'll go for the last question then. Extraordinary. Nice, nice name. Got that I like one, that. Yeah. What goes into Tomb and Grimoire? Pl- oh, Tome, Tomb. Tome. What goes into Tome and Grimoire placement? 
basically, yeah, like we try to think tomes are like for people who are kind of just a little bit more exploratory. Like yeah. they'll, they'll look in here, they'll see what what could be up here. Slight um, risk reward. Slight, uh, yeah, maybe not in go, really obscure places. Yeah, maybe go a bit out of your way to get it or yeah. something like that. Uh, and every le- it's kind of we let every level designer do it their own way a little bit. Like they have their preference preferences mm-hmm. how they like to do it. Uh, and everybody has a little bit of a different, different style, and I hope you notice that while playing sometimes. Um, and Grim Mars, we we kind of go pretty hardcore. Like, yeah. okay, what would I maybe in here? Like, we try to find possible spots that it could be fun, which are kind of fairly early in the in the level, and then somewhere somewhere yeah. around halfway. Um, With Grim Mars, it's one of those things where uh, we want people to find them eventually yeah <laughs> like we don't um, obviously some of you guys are going to find it at day one because you're rigorous grimoire uh, hunters but uh pressing e on every exactly wall yeah, yeah just hoping <laughs> to hoping to find something uh, oh is that a, no no pressing e on walls for the what 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 what, what <laughs> did you say <laughs> no, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> okay so uh yeah and so what we want is to offer something for people that maybe have played through the levels uh and want to play through them again and maybe something to seek out with that and then oh, I mean we have different players right we have the ones that are going to be finding them on day one yeah. we have the ones that might happen upon them uh, or are playing like and and then fancy a little bit more like try to go searching in locations that may, maybe haven't been yeah. to before and then we have people that want to know the locations but like maybe don't have time or just feel like uh, they they just want to know so that they can start playing with their friends that perhaps know the locations yeah. and they might like look online or try and find out from other people where the grimoires might but be. But I quite like that when playing online. The whole like I remember when I played in the first week or so of the yeah. game and I was like, and some people like, hey, you want you want to get the grimoire? I know where it is. Yeah, I'm like, like yeah, I know where it is. I know I where it is. It there. <laughs> but but yeah, it, I really I, like I, that. I like, put it there. <laughs> I really like that kind of like folk almost folkloric thing where like people are telling each other yeah. people are joining each other's missions telling oh it's over there yeah, yeah. Or, like i joined somebody and then they they show me where it is or like i i even went in and showed somebody like a few a few days yeah. later like hey you want a grimoire yeah. what, what the hell is a grimoire they have to, like, <laughs> yeah exactly so it's kind of like fun. oh wait i'll open this and yeah, yeah it's kind of this fun you're kind of showing them uh, a new thing which is adds to the co-op thing i think yeah all right great so some great questions hopefully you know we've answered them to the best of our ability. Yeah, I like those questions. That was um, good. Fun to talk about. Yeah, we'll be doing question and answers every live stream. So if you fancy asking us any more questions, then feel free to jump on Reddit or the forums or be on the, t- the Twitch stream next week and uh, fire away. Liam will probably be here next week as well, so he'll be able to answer any questions also. So I believe there's two things left of the stream. Next up is going to be the giveaway. Exciting. Uh, so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, as we said previously, we've got the usual 10 hats, and then we also have a Drakenfels DLC to give away to people or to one person. Uh, but that DLC will we'll, we'll send it to you, I believe, like the day that we will be launching it. So, you won't get the code until, uh, until like in eight days' time, you'll probably get the code from us, uh, and then you'll be able to activate it as soon as it goes live. Is on it stage. only eight days? It is only eight days yet. Oh, not that, oh, not that so long, long now. So, so long. I have so much time. Is the uh, <laughs> the code for entering? Is it the same as always? Uh, let's uh, let's do one other. Let's uh, do. Can we do something about Liam? Yeah, I, I, I saw <laughs> a lot a lot of because uh, I asked the chat what they thought we should use, and uh, yeah. a lot of suggestions they I think they've caught on to us was hashtag free Liam. Okay. Oh yeah yeah okay. yeah. So, so we'll do either, either hashtag. We can do both, right? Uh, no, yeah, let's do yeah, one for so, charity, right? No, 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 we'll no. do, no, we'll do okay. both. Because, I mean, we always do hashtag Tom's Beard. So okay. well, you can either put in hashtag Tom's Beard in the chat or hashtag free Liam. Uh, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't, we'll see. Uh, but either of those to enter the giveaway and good luck to everyone. I think free Liam is winning this one. <laughs> yeah, free, hashtag free Liam is definitely winning this one. <laughs> Okay, so, so we'll give that a couple of minutes. Oh, uh, we got some Tom's Beard to... coming okay, in Okay, good, okay, good. But Tom's Beard without the... Um... Only Tom's beard, right? That's it. Hashtag no, Tom's beard. Hashtag Tom's beard. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but some people were putting the apostrophe. But yeah. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. No apostrophe. No, no, no. no. Apostrophe. Apost- apostrophe. Apostrophe. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay, so we'll yeah we'll let that. Free baby there. face. I saw. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> As a fellow baby facer. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we'll let it run for like thirty seconds or something. Keep the entries coming. 
Hashtag damn Daniel. Oh. <laughs> I saw a couple of those as well. Yeah. Uh, I saw someone that was uh, Daniel's Locks. Nice. Oof. Not bad. We got Be- Beardless Daniel. <laughs> Hashtag free Liam. Mm. Do we free him? No. 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 This is our show now. Yeah, exactly. No more Liam. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, right. So we'll go for the first winner. Do you want to do the honours for the first winner? Name's just there under the... the you've got to be... Well, it's worth mentioning, probably, before we do this. You have to be either... Yeah, you have to be following the stream to be able to enter the competition. So yeah. if you aren't following, unfortunately, we'll have to move the one to you someone else. You have to else. be at least 10 years old as well. <laughs> <laughs> to be playing the game. <laughs> you have to be 17 to play the game. No, that's true. 17 to okay. okay, so first if winner. If you can win, still on the screen. First, first Oh, yeah, spin. Exciting. So spanner, it's, not spanner, just, spanner. it's not just hats this time. So good luck. Get that spin going. Yeah, yeah. Oh. there it is. So go ahead, spin the wheel. Let's Look see for what those magic letters. DLC. It's going to be the first one, right? Oh, no. It's a, it's a hat. So a hat for the Tikari. Huh? Yeah, the Tikari. Tikari, maybe. You seems. are following, so yeah. congratulations. You've good got job a hat. following. Yep. Next I'd... up. Oh. Dwarf hat. Dwarf hat for... Eerie Eric. Eerie Eric. Pretty good name. Congratulations, Pretty good. Eerie Eric. Uh, this person Next doesn't one. follow us. Yeah, unfortunately oh, you won't Squig follow is start following us. You are following us, though. So, yeah. Wargrin, you win Ooh, a dwarven so hat. I mean, but now we're like... like p- yeah, but we, we're, like, the, dwarven the dwarven hat is still hat cool. is prestigious anyway. Yeah. Like, the DLC... Un- unlucky to the person that gets the DLC, think, right? Because you, you don't get a hat. I, so. I think it's a little bit like placing <laughs> a, like, a Porsche next to a Lamborghini or something. Yeah, exactly. Like, now exactly. the Porsche you've looks a, bad yeah, because... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you've got a... Okay. Oh, John CMR93. John CMR93, congratulations. Wins you have won dwarf a hat for Bardin. Next up, we have Crepper TVRO. Ooh, and Crepper, a dwarf hat. Crepper TVRO, so you, have won, you have won a dwarf hat. So for close Bardin. to going to Drakenfels. Congratulations. Next up is UID134. You have won a hat for Bardin. Congratulations. All right, I can't believe it's going on this I've got You are also subscribed. Uh, it's worth mentioning. We'll do some subscriber shout outs at yeah. the end of the stream as well for those of you who have subscribed. And that, we should probably explain what the subscribe uh, <laughs> stuff does. So Go ahead. you'll be able to watch the stream ad free. You'll be able to use our cool emotes anywhere on Twitch. Uh, currently, we have the, what is it, Fat Shark Dice, Fat Shark Cute, and. and the- Fat Shark Skaven. Fat Shark Skaven. Which is the Vermintide logo. Okay. And Fat Shark Hat. And Fat Shark Hat. Okay, so, yeah, there you go. I feel Thank like reading you. the next one. So we have four now. Yeah, I've got uh, a feeling about this one. We have four now. Uh, so, yeah, subscribing will give you that. And the f- also, you'll be able to get a hat for Kruber. Yes. Will be, the coolest hat. Yes, exactly. Uh, all proceeds from subscriptions will be going to charity. So Okay, i got a feeling about this one. Can I, can I click it? Okay. Okay. Right. Go ahead. So, good luck. Blow on it for luck. Okay. Here we go. A bit weird. Yeah, pretty weird. That's how I. That's how <laughs> oh, I roll. Oh. oh, oh. Okay. Oh, <laughs> yay! I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to Prophetic Heresy. Yep. You have just won a hat for Bard in the Dwarf. All right. Okay. So here we go. Moogi Panda. Moogi Panda. You have won either a hat or a DLC. And it's going to be a hat. A hat. It's down for to Moogie Panda. It's a 50 50 here. Here we go. Congratulations. Here we go. You've won a hat for Bar. Uh, bar <laughs> uh, we will be sending the codes out for these via Twitch. So okay. you'll get a message in your inbox, and that will either contain your winning hat or DLC. The DLC will obviously come a bit later when we release the DLC. Mm-hmm. We got TX Herald. He's rolling, rolling. TX Herald. Oh, oh it's down to oh the last God. two. It's down to the last two. TX Herald, congratulations. You've won a hat for Bardin. This DLC doesn't want to go. <laughs> Next yeah. is Vapsy Vox. Vapsy Vox. I feel, I'm feeling this one. Yeah, Vapsy Vox. Congratulations. You, you have won again? something. Okay, here it's we go. It's 50-50 between either the hat or the new Drakenfels DLC. Oh, it's the, oh, it's the DLC. Drakenfels DLC. <laughs> so congratulations. Close. So, Vapsy Vox, we'll be sending you a code for the new Drakenfels DLC. That will be coming uh, in eight days when we release the DLC. Uh, so congratulations! I'm very sorry you're not getting a hat. 
Yeah, unfortunately, you won't be getting a hat, but you will be getting a new DLC. So. All right, and for the last one, the last one, what will it be? Yeah, <laughs> the classic final spin. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Okay, oh, it's, it's a, a it's hat. A hat. It's a hat. <laughs> So, congratulations, Regulator Zero. You have just won yourself a hat for Bardin. All, All right. right. Cool. We still have some nice. Tom's beards coming in. Yeah, yeah, a little absolutely. bit late. A lot oh. of entries in this yeah. this one, actually. Yeah. Okay. So, final part of the stream. We're going to do some quick subscriber shout outs. So, thank you for everyone who's subscribing. Your hat should be on its way soon. And also, you know, yeah, thanks for you know, giving your money to charity as well, because we'll be giving, like I said previously, we'll be giving all money that we raise from the subscriptions to charity. Which which charity? Do we know? Uh, has that been we're, decided No, yet? we're still working that out. Yeah. It will be, it, we will decide upon it. Yeah. We'll Would make you? an announcement once yeah. we have that. Soon. Okay, so where are we going to be going? There We've just got the, yep, yeah, so... Uh, Baron Vonar? Baron Vonar. Baron Vonar. Baron Vonar. Baron Vonar. Thank you very much for subscribing. And uh, Squashy Dread. Squashy Dread, thank you for subscribing. And this is very pointless. It is, isn't it? <laughs> thank you for <laughs> subscribing as well. Your hat will be on Ra its way. Rayer? Rayer. Ra thank you. Know. Yeah, sorry. Tech Priest Sareth. Well, thank name. you very much. 40k. Yeah, 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 definitely. Pugilus, also good. <laughs> I'm really not sorry. Thank you for subscribing. Kaza or Karza, <laughs> I don't know. Kaza. <laughs> thank you for subscribing. Uh, Baz Mordan, thank you for subscribing. Sounds like a badass dwarf. Yeah, Baz Mordan. Yeah. For Baz Mordan. <laughs> Close enough, right? Barry. <laughs> yeah. Spire, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that could be it. Yeah. Spirant frame, spirant frame. Either or, you have you a subscriber, and we thank you for that. The next yeah. one's a great one. Uh, give hat. Thank you for subscribing. You will actually be getting a hat because you subscribed. So please a hat give for hat. Kruber, yeah. you congratulations. You will be getting a hat. It's not a a win a win, but uh, I mean, he gets you get hat. one. You get one anyway. So good enough. It's a very exclusive hat as well. It is an exclusive hat. I mean, only people who subscribe will get this hat. It's worth noting that as well. The hat that we give away on the stream is a hat for Bardin, and the hat that you get from subscribing is a hat for Kruber. So. They are two different ones. They match. <laughs> Dr. Jube, Jube, uh, it's also, a also a subscriber. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. And the final one, Jogging Bear. <laughs> Thank you very much for subscribing. All right. So I think that about wraps it up. Uh, we'll be on next week. We'll be doing the Play With The Dev stream, I believe, next week. So we'll be playing the game. Drakenfels won't be released I'm not sure if we're going to be able to give you a sneak peek. We'll see. We'll see. But uh, if not, we'll be playing either with the fans or we'll just be showing off some different things in the game. We're not sure, quite sure yet. So we'll work that out over the next week. Uh, and yeah, so stay tuned for that next week. Uh, and then the schedule will continue looping. So after that, we'll have the introduction to a team member and then similar one to this, etc. Sneak preview. Oh, sneak preview, of course. So yeah, we'll, we'll keep it. We'll keep it circling. The um, what we're going to be doing on streams is available on our website, so you'll be able to see that. And how much is Drakenfels? I'm not sure, actually. How much is Drakenfels? Uh, I, I, I should I think, know this. Like, we, we, we know it-ish, but I don't think we should really say no. in case we get it wrong. Yeah. But All right, yeah. it will be more expensive than the fall, I believe, because it's three maps. But I'm not quite sure. It's, it will be worth point, it. So I, it, I made it. It's worth regard, it. Yeah, regardless <laughs> of the price, it will be worth it. it. it I, what I can say is that it will probably... Be <laughs> probably s somewhere in between the fall and vermitide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somewhere in between the fall and the, ver the and the game will be the price. But uh, yeah, hopefully next week we'll be able to tell you that. Well, definitely next week we'll be able to tell you that because it will only be a day before it's released. So it's going to be so much cool stuff in there. It'll be cheap. Yeah, feel yeah. cheap. <laughs> it'll feel cheap. <laughs> yeah, it'll feel cheap. All right. So thank you very much for stopping by. Uh, we look forward to seeing you on next week's stream as well. Thank you, Daniel, for stopping by, giving us a sneak peek on Drakenfels. Thank you, Tom, for having me. No problem. We'll hopefully see you on some streams in the future as well. Uh, and Liam will be next uh, back next week as well. So uh, until then, see you later. See you.